Why was it raining now? It's the hottest day of the bloody year. Right. Oh, blimey. I'm absolutely roasting. Right. Balls. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here on a roasting hot day in Lincolnshire. It's a celebratory edition of Pistons the Podcast. Uh, because it is our 10,000 subscriber special. Got to keep busy. Yes, got to, got to keep busy. 10,000 of you uh, now subscribe to the channel. What do you reckon to that? Excellent. And in special podcast uh, fashion then, I've sprung this on you, it is a special edition of Q&A with Dad. Q&A. Uh, so, Ooh. Dad doesn't know this is, well, you didn't know this was coming. This is from Ikea, you know. Yeah, it is from Ikea. It's the blooming good little step stools, these are. Uh, this has, What's that called, a smorgasbord? I don't know what it's called, uh, but it's a... The it's toss. A stool. Toss uh, step stool. Anyway, so... It's going to be a extended edition of Pistons the Podcast celebrating 10,000 subscribers. Thanks to everybody that has subscribed, that has watched, that has liked, that has commented, and has sent your questions in for this. Before we get going into Q&A, though, we'll talk about a couple of things. One, my T-shirt. Yeah, it still looks like you're a milkman somewhere. Which is the Haggerty UK Festival of the Unexceptional... I don't know, 10th anniversary edition. And on the back, can you see that? Look, the Proton Black Knight is on yeah, the back. There's a Morris all, Attell pickup on there. I bet it was better. All the previous winners of the More Festival use. of the Unexceptional are on my T-shirt today. Uh, I also need to talk to you about a That's few other things. That's not the 2024 edition, though, is it? Yeah, this was from today's... Yeah, but well, not today's. This was from this year's... Uh, show. Oh, but it hasn't got this year's winner on it, then. Well, no, they're not going to print them at the festival, are they? Is that your note? It needs Toyota Hilux. Go grab a pen. <laughs> no. Right, Toyota Hilux. Restored or not? Question mark. Uh, don't go there. We, <laughs> we don't do politics. Uh, before we get going, I want to show you a few things. We don't do anything controversial. Look at this. I uh, know. We've been sent this. But uh, is it for smart cars? Uh, well, we'll soon find out. It is from a company called King Bolan. Never heard of them. Uh, it is a smart scan diagnostic tool. It is the uh, KBL03. It's actually called the S800 uh, smart diagnostic tool. We have been sent this. So, um, fair warning, it's not going to be a, hey, look at this, it's the best thing in the world. We're going to give it a real world test at some point. That is oh, coming cool. up. What do you reckon to that? Will it plug into this? Uh, yeah, I should think so. It's OBD2, right? No. No, uh, it's not. Um, so it's an OBD smart scan tool. We are going to give a genuine, honest opinion. I'm not getting paid to do a review for it, but actually, we haven't got a smart diagnostic tool. This company reached out to me and said, we'll send you on for free. Read into it why I said we'll have a look at it. We can cut out and keep that. If it's no good, we can put it in the bin. If it's good, we can, can we, use it. Yeah, we can plug everything into it, see what's that, what's so, doing. So they said to me, what cars do you have that we can send you a smart tool for? And I said, it would be really handy to have one for the smart cars. Yeah. So I said, smart cars, please. No, no, we've not got any of them. Uh, so I said, what about Audis? Because I think that would be the next thing that went yeah, wrong. Audis are a bit quaint, aren't they? Uh, and so this is apparently for Audi. But then doing my research, it's for everything. Uh, when I read it, it said, yeah. You know. But anyway, talking about Audis, though, because I plug my little Tupin Saintness one in and it doesn't get fault codes that your one does. Yeah. So this is the King Bolin S800 Smart Diagnostic Tool. Um, it does a 15-code reset, oil brakes, SAS... ETS. SAS, not SRS. No, SAS. ETS. Yeah, SAS. What's SAS? Special uh, Air Force Services. There you are. ETS, BMS, DPF, TPMS, bleed. Does it? IMO, injection box, EGR, AFS, suspension and sundries. Uh, made in China, obviously. Can I have a read? Yeah. It's TPMS. Yeah, it does all oh, sorts, cool. mate. All sorts. 160 quid if you want one of them, but uh, we'll soon find out if it's worth you. Spending your money on it. Where does it say that? What, 160 quid? Or oh, I see. 15 reset. Yes, yeah, so it probably doesn't do diagnostic, but we'll find out, won't we? We'll soon find out. Anyway, that is coming to the channel. Let's face it, TPMS reset's a good thing to have. What's that? Tire pressure monitoring system. Oh, yeah, that is good to have. Yeah. We don't have anything with tire pressure monitoring, though, do we? I do. What, the Note? No. Hyundai. Hyundai. 
Oh, put, cool. put the King Boland down. This isn't the King Boland review video. No, I'm not to supplementary recital. Anyway, we shall anyway, find stick out. Stick it shall. down here. Put it yeah, down I'm here. looking forward to We're not talking about that today. Oh, well, you've, you started it. <laughs> but that is coming to the channel. Uh, also, I've got you a present to celebrate 10,000 subscribers. I'm still paying off the weekly, uh, weekly, uh, what was it, rates on it. No, oh. they're not. They give you them. When Snap you, on mug. If you spend enough on his van, he'll give you one. Oh, no, it's not got his name on, though. They normally have their name Oh, on. no, no, that's a special one, that is. Ooh. And it's black as well, black Snap on mug. Smart. A big mug as well. It is, isn't it? Yeah, nice. I've, uh, I've test, test drove it. Works nicely. What do you reckon to that? Smart. Snap on mug. And... I want you to close your eyes for this oh. one because I've bought Dad. I've been middle of Lidled this morning. Don't cheat. I'm going to oh. read you something. Right. So I've bought you a tool. Well, is this a bit like blinking, waiting for the what's the word for it? The mystery, the uh, the extra buy from the expert on women bargaining. I'm going to read you something from the box, and I want you to tell me. No if you cheating. Can, close them peepers. I want you to see if you can guess from this. Uh, blurb on the box yep. what it is I've bought you. Do oh. not use for medical purposes. Do not insert into any orifices of the body. What have I bought you? It sounds like some sort of thermometer. Here you are. Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> well, exactly. So it's the part you'd be a, you'd be advanced you'd be an advanced practitioner if you put that in, wouldn't you? I think it's not. I don't think it's the handheld bit you're inserting. I oh, think it's right. the actual oscilloscope bit or whatever it is. Oh, cool. But that is. A oh, we can put it in the plug leads. Plug inspection lines. camera and takes pictures and all sorts of stuff. And you don't have to use it to your phone. You just does it itself. Does it to itself. Oh, because some of them you have to use your mm. phone. Yeah. There's often been times where you've said, I wish we had a little inspection camera. We could looked in there. And there's often times I've thought, I wish I could show the viewers what we're looking at inside engines or inside That's spaces. Smart, so that... I didn't know they'd got them in the middle of the little. ...takes photographs uh, and stores it to the device. Yeah, you put it down your drains, you can, but you can't insert it into bodily orifices. <laughs> now, I want to know the story behind that because there's definitely a story behind that. No, it's just in case. The thing is, in this day and age, if you didn't tell them not to do it, yeah. that's it. What is it? There's all sorts of things, isn't there? There's some stupid stuff I've been reading about, but it didn't say on the instructions, do not drink this petrol. Anyway, what do you think to that? I'm impressed with that. I can't wait to stick it up somewhere. <laughs> on that note, let's move on. That's my gift to you this month from oh, YouTube smart. Revenues. A snap-on mug and a Parkside Can't wait to stick inspection this camera. Oh, you could yeah. stick it in the fuel tank of the Armstrong Sidley and have a look in there. Stick it don't know how long in the gearbox. I don't know how long the probe is. Oh, is it? About that, yeah. Oh, crikey. The long old thing. It wrap, wraps around it because I... Uh, You've had a look at it. I had a look. Not in that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there was one already yeah. open at I Liddell's. say it's sealed. That's, that was the last one left. That's impressive, that is. Can't wait to stick it in the plug hole. <whistles> have a look at the pistons. Yeah, we can have a look at pistons. What do you reckon to that? I'm very impressed. Stick it then. here then, we've got to crack I, on. I like that. It's got an adjustable light. I think, uh, do you want to know how much it was? Go on then. 40 quid. Buy <whistles> a new one for that. It is a new one. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. 40 quid that was Smart. this morning. I got middle of Liddled. Um, <laughs> But that is my present to you this month. Cheers, bud. Right, let's crack on with Q&A then. I want to, no, I want to stick that somewhere. I've got, I've got fed up with my King Bowl. <laughs> get, get rid of that. We've got a, got a cap. You could open up the King Bowl and stick that inside and have a look inside. Let's do something sensible. Yes. God, it's getting warm, dude. I have got for you lots and lots of questions yep. uh, to celebrate 10,000 subscribers. And I think we shall kick it off with a question from Four Wheels Good on YouTube. Anything planned for 10,000 subscribers? Yeah, this podcast. We're doing a live Q&A with Dad. Uh, that's what's planned for the 10,000 subscribers. What have you got to say about 10,000 subscribers, by the way? Well, it's quite impressive, really, isn't it? You are the superstar, my friend, not me. No, it's quite impressive, really. I'm, I'm surprised. Well, I'm not surprised. I'm just honoured that people want to have a look at us. Good, thank you. Acting soft. Uh, Edward Newton says the following. Dad. 
What is your favourite car that you've ever worked on? Oh, Series 2 Jag. Really? What? What? When, you, when I say favourite car that you've worked on, that is your favourite car or your favourite car to do work on? No, they're not very good to work on, but that's mm. my favourite car. So your favourite car is a Series 2 Jag, yeah. but what is the, your favourite yeah, car? A, so it's an XJ6 Series 2, not a Roman Mark II. Oh, right, OK. No, I'm not a Mark II. XJ6 Series 2. Series 2. They're lovely yeah. looking cars, yeah, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. Proper, a proper Jag. But not, ho but not nice to work on? Not particularly nice. So what is your favourite car you've ever worked on? Mini! Really? Yeah. Why is that? Because I've been working on Mini since I was 16. OK. Easy to do? Yeah. Not much goes wrong on a Mini, does it? <laughs> <laughs> It'll always keep you busy. Edward, thank you for your question. Uh, now we know. Ivan says, Dad, he's actually he's got multiple questions here, and we must say... Is it Ivan Wilson? Uh, no, it's Ivan Leon. Oh. Uh, what is the best Rover car? Rover 800. No, I lie. 600. Why the 600? Don't say it. Um, I, I had one and I really enjoyed driving it. Mm -hmm. And also? I had one and it's a really lovely car to drive. Any comments about Honda engines? No, I'm not allowed to. Have <laughs> Which leads us on nicely to Ivan's second part of this yeah. question. I think he's probably predicted this. What is the best power plant produced? Used to be. The Honda? Yeah. What is the worst power plant ever produced? Ooh, oh, uh, I didn't like the old SD1 with a six cylinder engine in it. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, they had a six cylinder engine in them. That was a bit funny. I can't say there was rubbish. I thought you was going to say K series. No. The K series, I think, is misunderstood. The K series suffered from a lot of political problems, really. But as an engine? It was a good thing good if it was idea. looked after. Let's face it, if Mr Flipping Lotus decided, that's a good idea, I'll use that. Yeah. It can't be that bad because they, they know about them sort of things, don't they? So, best Rover car, Rover 600. Best power plant is the Honda engine, right? And the worst? See, I might be in rubbish because Toyotas must be good as well, would not they? Yeah, this is your opinion. This is yeah. your Q&A. I don't no think right. Hondas are so good now. So the, ro so the Honda engines... Honda had a rovers. thing where they sort of had this same engine for a long while and they'd got this mm. sort of motto, if it works, yeah. keep using it. If it ain't it. broke, don't fix it. Yeah. yeah, I get that. Thank you very much, Ivan, for your question. Next question comes all the way from Norway, one of your favourite places. Excellent. Uh, from Vegard. He's got a Nissan uh, question first and foremost. Uh, on a J10 Nissan Qashqai... Yep. Would you say that the drop links are a weakness? Yeah, it was always changing them. Talk to me about Nissan drop links. It used to go, knock, 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 knock. It was, they, they was regular, 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 regular. Roll bar drop links. All the time was changing them. Why is that? Well, they can't have been up to the job, can they? Okay. So, Vagard, if you've got an issue with your drop links on your J10 Quish Quash... It's normal. It's a normal thing. Yeah, it was always changing them. He also goes on to say, what is your dream holiday? I know, I know, I know. What's that? Pike fishing in Scotland. Yeah? I like going to Turkey as well, when it's really, 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 really hot. Yeah. It's a different sort of hot than here, though. Mum's not into it being scorching not hot. Not anymore, no. Last time we was there, we did set off for going for a walk at about 9 o'clock, but I think the temperature had reached about eight, 38 by then. Ooh. And that was nine o'clock in the morning. So Scorchio. We went and sat in the shade again. I'm a fan of turkey. I, I like never turkey. was, you know. I never fancied the no, idea of going. And then Mrs John Cooper forced me to go, and it was mm. I would go there every year if I could. But but pike fishing in Scotland. Oh, yeah. 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 Would yeah. you be pike fishing in the locks there? Yeah. Or in the rivers? In the locks, in the locks, in the locks. When we went up to the log cabin, yes. uh, Cree and Larrick, I think it was, there was a river at the back there. Oh, yeah, yeah. We used to do go fishing out oh, there. Oh, no, 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 no. I wasn't allowed to fish in there. I'm from Lincolnshire. You've what? heard of the Lincolnshire poacher, haven't you? What are they going to do? Um, 
We had some fun times fishing in there. Yeah. What was it catching? Trout. And Rainbow trout. Was Rainbow escaped trout. from the trout farm. Oh, yeah, there was a trout farm just up the road. <laughs> some tasty breakfasts. Um, vanguard has got four questions here, actually. These next two uh, are into one. Uh, do you enjoy being on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I do. I didn't think I'd ever get you doing this on yeah. YouTube. Uh, it sort of naturally sort of manifested itself yeah. to Dad's doing the work, John's talking. I, I often flick on, oh, John's got a new video out. Let's see what stupid thing he said. Oh, no, rub me and go, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. See, that's the dynamic of the channel. I am. Oh, no, what did he say that for? I am not mechanically minded. So I'm asking the questions from a non-mechanically minded point of view. I know the basics. see how much you've learned. When I take the wheel off, mm. And then there's this big round thing yeah. behind it. What's it called? Brake hub. Hub okay. cover. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, would you consider having your own YouTube channel? No. No, they are. So no, Dad's, Dad's Garage is not coming to YouTube. No, definitely but not. But you're okay being a guest star on this one? Yeah. Jim Wells has said, John, I'm looking at budget torque wrenches including at one at your favourite place, Lidl, for £15. Would you recommend a budget torque wrench? Would it be accurate enough? He's asking you, not me. No, this is Jim asking you. This is, this is Q&A for Dad. It's not Q&A for John. Well, I've got expensive torque wrenches and yep. I've got cheap torque wrenches. Yep. And I think as long as you're not using it a lot, a cheap one's all right. So but Jim, if you're using it all the time, it's, it's going to go out of calibration, isn't it? I think Jim has basically said he's going to use it once or twice. Yeah, this is it. I'm sure it'll be accurate enough. So a £15 budget torque wrench from Lidl? I'd read the reviews. It must be somebody doing reviews. Yeah. Because some, I've read reviews of some cheap ones. And it might have been user error, but some bloke people have broken bolts with them. Oh, that's not... But not maybe bad. they didn't realise when it had clicked... Because I set you off with a torque wrench, didn't I? Yeah. And then you didn't realise it had clicked when it had. It had, yeah, you're right. Talking of torque wrenches, I bought you a torque yeah. wrench last week. Second hand, what is it, Clark or Sealy Premier? Sealy, yeah. Super Duper one, 100 and something quid brand new. Digital one. Yeah. You can't get on with it. No. I'm too thick to set it. <laughs> so, Jim, yes, budget torque wrench. Just check the reviews out. I'm just going to wander off and I'll just fetch something. All right, Excuse you can get me. something. All right, as this turned into torque wrench segment. So that's a Norbar, fairly expensive. Hold one. it up, hold it up so we can see. That's called a Norbar. That's, that's the one we expensive. use normally, isn't it? Yep, and I've used that lots and lots and lots. And when I was still working, it was getting calibrated regularly. Last time it was calibrated was 2017. Have a look at that. Then. And it never had to have any adjustment. Okay. So this is, as you say, Norbar. Yep. It's had quite a bit of uh, bit of use. Yeah, I used it every day for years. Um, but it never needed calibre. Oh, it's from Blue Point. So it's a Blue Point Starred 150B2, right? Yeah. I better not drop that. This Put is that a, there. This is a Tang one. No, it's, it goes up a lot higher. It goes up to 350 uh, Newton metres. The ratchets have played up on this, but you can buy them. That's another expensive torque wrench. So hang on a minute, how much is that torque wrench if I, I wanted to buy it? No. Hundred pounds? More. Two hundred pounds? What about the Blue Point one? Expensive? Not really. No, it's it's in the three figures bracket though. And what's this? And this is like your thirty quid screw fix one, the Magnuson from. And I just use that for my mouth bike. It's quarter cool drive, so I don't use it a lot, but I can't see it lasting very long. But you're not saying don't buy that? No, because that's been all right for as far as I'm concerned. And the, and the digital one I bought you, which were £300 brand new when they were first released. Yeah, they're not now, are they? No, they're about 150 You know why, don't you? Because nobody my age can set it. Yep, there you go. The Snap-on does one, it's about six or £800. Pounds. Um, and I know people that's got them, but I'm, I'll be honest with you, I tried setting that digital thing and, and it wasn't for you it's a bit like it's a bit like the clock on our new cooker after sit and think about how to reset it <laughs> if it ain't broke don't fix it uh, does it does does a torque wrench need to be digital i'm guessing they must have a lot more accuracy maybe but, but you know it goes because it, it beeps and vibrates when it reaches the desired torque 
that one just goes click. But you know when it's up to talk, right? You see, the old ones didn't even click. They just sort of had a little spring that finally went over. If you ever watch Alan Milliard doing it, it doesn't actually click. You can, feel, you can see him going, it's just about to go, I'll stop there. Mm, there you go. There's uh, so a lot to be said for developing the feel in your hands. I'm nearly certain people that's bought a cheap talk with yourself. Yeah, yeah. You didn't realise that had clicked, did you? No. And I had to come running to grab you to stop you from ripping your sump plug out. Yeah. Because it went, the, less, the less torque you've got on them, the less they click. So I can see the advantage of a one that goes... Yeah, yeah. It tells you. But not for you. Let's face it. If you look in the workshop manual for this, there are no torque wrench settings listed for it. Right. These were built without torque wrenches. So they were done to feeling and common sense. Yeah. Or as an old fella used to say it in the garage, and he was an old fella, and he's a bit funnier, this is my torque wrench. Yeah, fine. And, and, and I think we've, we spoke about that before when we've yeah. been tightening stuff up. You, you know how to feel it. But for people yeah. like Jim... No, you need some things you need to do. Probably. 15 quid will do, though. I would have thought so, yeah. And if you're not going to use it very often, 100% certain. There you are. Where's it from? Well, it's from the middle of Lidl. I... I can't, I, I, I can't criticise the middle a little. They are. They buy it so f cheap, but buy that much stuff, they can buy it at a good price, can't they? Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Jim, for your question. Thanks for getting your torque wrenches out, shall we? Well, I like torque wrenches. <laughs> <laughs> Matt has given us a question, and this is quite an interesting one. It's a hypothetical question. Uh, there are two cars for sale. Yep. They are both exactly the same model and they're both exactly the same price. Yeah. Car one is mechanically perfect, okay? Every single service book stamp yeah. has been looked after religiously, but the bodywork is terrible. Yeah. It's falling apart, big holes in it, yeah. clearly needs some work on the bodywork. Car two is the entire opposite. Yeah. The bodywork is immaculate. Looks like it's just left the factory. But the engine is seized, the diff is cracked, and the suspension is sagging. Which one are you buying if you're a home DIYer? The one that needs the mechanical work doing on it. There's no way you can get a decent... In the, on a modern car, you can't get a satisfactory paint job, can you? No. You could on your Morris Minor with some celly, you'd be able to get it somewhere near. But you can't with a modern car. Hey, can you imagine trying to sort the paintwork on, on that... Pearlescent Suzuki Swift you brought home. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be a full respray, wouldn't it? Be a nightmare, wouldn't it? Um, that would have been my theory. When I go out and buy a car, I know that you can sort out all the mechanical problems in the world, but cannot paint for toffee. No, and bodywork's expensive. Yes. Mechanical is expensive, but not as expensive as paint bodywork. So when I'm buying a car, if there's bodywork issues, I walk away. Because I know that we can't fix that uh, unless I don't spot it, such as the big hole in the Rover 75. Mm. So, Matt, in answer to your question, car two, right? Oh, yeah. Immaculate bodywork. I suppose you could get a new engine, pop it in. Get a new diff, pop it in. Sort the suspension out in an afternoon. <laughs> but you can't not, start not doing bodywork. Not to make it good. There's your answer, Matt. Good question. I like that. It is, actually, isn't it? I never thought about that. Clampy says, what is your favourite workshop tool? Good question, that as well. <sighs> oh, dear, do, 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 do. got to be a hand lamp, hasn't it? Is it? <laughs> you can't see we have the damn thing. Is that you? your favourite, though? That's the most essential, right? Your hand yeah. lamp. My favourite tool. My favourite tool, my favourite tool. What, what, what gets me work excited when I pick it up to use it? Oh dear! <laughs> it soon will be. <laughs> Let's have a good give that a the, good look. The Parkside it. inspection. My camera. favourite workshop tool. I, I like screwdrivers. Do you? I get, I get excited looking at screwdrivers. Oh. I could be a screwdriver. So there's something nice about a screwdriver. Is there? I often have to stop myself and say, "Don't buy that screwdriver." Oh, I see. Yeah, I do like screwdrivers. Why? God only knows. There's something nice about. Buying them what, and tactile, and new and holding them, yeah. I often think to myself, I start to buy them screwdrivers, but I'm not going to do because I don't need them. But. Okay, so you are a screwdriver pervert. Yeah. You're in the shop. What are you looking for in a 
in a in a nice screwdriver. That's what it feels like. And what would some it, screwdrivers don't feel nice? Some okay, yeah, I get that. But yeah, I like screwdrivers. I do. I enjoy I enjoy holding a screwdriver. You heard it here first. Yeah. Favorite workshop tool: a screw a yeah. nice screwdriver. Most essential hand lamp. Oh, yeah. Here's a question, right? I always get frustrated when we're in the workshop because it's bloody dark in here sometimes. Yep. And you pull the cars in that way, hmm. not this way. So when we have the door open, I'm not seeing... Why is it that workshops and garages and service are always it's so too dark? too bright, when you come out from underneath it, you go... Ah! So you've just got your hand lamp under there, you're focusing, you're illuminating the world where you want to be. Yeah, I suppose so. I went into a petrol station last night on the way home and it was catastrophically bright. Yeah. It, to the point where even I went, oh, this is really bright. Even mm. I noticed it, but... Yeah, but since Ellie, when they first started using them bright white tubes in the garage, I didn't like them for a start. Mm. And I'm not sure whether it's good for you really anyway. It's the blue light, isn't it? I don't know. But anyway, yeah. you like to have it dark and then have a lamp. Yeah, darkish. Anyway. Like a mole. No, but then, you you know, when you come out, your eyes have got accustomed to the dark somehow. Mm. Fair enough. Well, shall we move on? Yeah. Common Sense UK, what a great name, mm. has said, uh, Dad, how much do you charge John for all his mechanical work? I don't charge him anything. He does buy. He buys me a little sweetener now and again, which I can, I'm internally grateful for. Uh, and I do enjoy a bit of spending a bit of time with my old boy as well. Uh, we 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 don't do this for money. No. Uh, we don't do this for fame <laughs> or notoriety. I, do, I I'm the same as you. I enjoy uh, doing it, but also uh, I do understand that it takes up a lot of your life. Yeah. Being my full-time mechanic, which may may come in nicely to another question later on. Uh, so in answer to the common sense's question, nothing. I don't think I could afford to pay you hourly rates. No, it can be slow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tony says, I don't, I don't know if this is a joke. I'm not, I'm, I'm not up to scratch. What makes Duckham's oil green and why? I ain't got the foggiest idea. Is Duckham's oil green? Well, it used to be, yeah. And when something was burning oil, you used to stick duckums in it because it tended not to burn it so much. Mm. I would suggest if something is green and it's a mineral, it would be copper. I have no idea. I'm guessing it's probably it's a bit like this is who we are because right. duckums oil has always been green. So it could be a trademark. It could be. Maybe they it? dye it. Yeah. There you are, Tony. We I don't know. Clue. Sorry, Tony. We don't know why it's green. Or, <laughs> it just is. Or what makes it? <laughs> yeah, some things in life. It just is. It just is. A wooden pirate has said, "Dad, and I know the answer to this already. So uh, thanks for setting me up here, wooden pirate. Do you think John has too many cars? Yeah, he does. We can't keep. We can't keep on top of them. Uh, what would be a work? So I've got mm, twenty-three, roughly." Hmm. What would be a workable number, do you think? Five. Five? Five's enough cars for anybody. That's not even one a day of the week. Yeah, but you have your favourite one. All right, six and you've got one good one for weekends. Let's go through the collection. Yeah. Let's start. I'm just getting, There's no particular order here. I'm just going to go around the driveway. Yep. Orange Smart. Yep, that's a good car. You use it every day. So keep in that one. Yeah, we'll keep that one. Purple Smart. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that one because it's... There's going to be more than six. It's because it's, it's, it's uh, too much invested in it to make it go. <laughs> uh, Mrs. John Cooklin's pink Fiat 500. That's not yours, that's Mrs. Cooklin's. Oh, it's, really, it's technically mine. No, it's not. Can't be. It's Mrs. Cooklin's. So, okay. You can't, you can't count her daily car in it. But it's in the collection. It's not in the collection. It's what she goes to work All in. All right, fine. We'll, we'll, we'll drop that one off yeah, then. Yeah, take the pink panther out. Uh, snail van. Yeah, that's, that's definitely got to stay because it's a useful tool. So three cars yeah. so far. Here we go. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a scrap proton on the drive, which is going. Yeah, it can go. That can go. There's another scrap proton in the garden, which is going. Yep. Let's now go into garage number one. Yep. Museum Micra. 
Yep. Can you see? It's going to be more than five. Uh, how many have we got two now? Four. You, you know, uh, what have we got? We've got the two smarts, yeah. the van, yeah. and Mrs. John Cooper's car. No. Right, okay, so yeah, museum yeah. micro, four. Yeah, yeah that's staying. Yeah. yeah. Toyota MR2, 1985. Oh. All right, you've got to keep that because it's too. I'm not even going to mention that. That's like it's, precious. It's 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 just you can't clear out that because it's how to put it. No, we, we've got to count it. We, if we're doing this properly. It's too political to mention. Right. Yeah. Uh, Armstrong Sidley. Yeah, keep that. Armstrong Sidley Lancaster. Yeah. We're at a six. We're at six, and we're not even scratched the surface. Proton Black Knight. No, um, I'll. I think somebody else should now be the custodian of it. Let somebody else have the pleasure of it. We're going to have to put a put a pause or something in here for me to just take ten minutes. Yeah, you like it, don't you? The Proton Black Knight. Yeah, you don't want. What's the point of having it? It only goes to a car show once a year. What's the point in anything? You wouldn't be driving around in it. All right, we'll carry on with the rest. Proton Jeff, I know how you feel about Jeff. Yeah, he can go. It's a dog. Uh, The purple Audi TT Roadster. Oh, he can go. I hate it. The purple Audi TT Coupe. It can go, I hate it. Jasper green Audi A4. It can go, it's rubbish. Silver Audi A4. Yeah, you can keep that one, it's a good car. What? So now we're on seven, and that's yeah. one that I've bought to scrap. Uh, what else have we got? Rover 75. No, you've no need for that. Well, we, that's that's the, the, the channel yeah. stalwart. Well, let somebody else have it now. What, the Rover 75? Yeah, let somebody else enjoy it. Uh. Red Nissan Micra. Well, so yeah. we're on eight now. We're keeping. Let's face it. Oh, I don't know really. It ought to be putting one of them things that goes. Then <laughs> <laughs> <and> goes. <laughs> um, China blue Nissan Micra. It can go. Yeah, it can actually. That's the one I agree with you on. Uh, that's about it from the collection I could think of, apart from scrap. Oh no, white Proton SE. Yeah, you ought to daily that. See? So, you're actually, out of all them cars, you're saying you don't need more than five, you've already picked, I don't know, nine that we should keep. No, seven, isn't it? I, I rest my case. Uh, which leads us on nicely to part two of Wooden Pirate's question. Cars, what cars would be in the Pete Coupland collection? Okay, I'm going to give you five, then. Five cars in the Pete Coupland collection. Go. Hey, Not from my collection. If you could have five cars in your collection. I don't particularly like cars, do I? That's the end of the channel. <laughs> you know, I don't, do I? I'm not a car fan, am I? I like my old Peugeot. because I knew that was coming. It just does what I want to do. Peugeot 406 is staying. Stank. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, yeah. Is that it? No. no. I mean, this note's all right, but... It would, could... would you put that in a collection? This is theoretical, by the way. Oh, we're at a collection. I'm not going to hold you to it. Oh, collection. Because you haven't got five cars. No. So I'm, not, it, I'm not into the collecting cars. You can have, uh, you can have, all right, two car carriage. Tell you yeah. what I would have. What's that? Well, I wouldn't because I don't want to be cluttered up with it. If I had a car. I like how you've caveated that because you know I'd go out and buy you one. <laughs> I'd have an old Morris 8. Okay. That's Let me field. grandmother had one. Right, I understand. That's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what colour? Black. Black, yeah. Yeah, I'd have a Morris 8. But not the really old ones, like 1940s, towards the later. They weren't so. Yeah, I'd have a Mor Morris 8. And if my grandmother could drive one, I'm sure I could. If you've got a. Because my grandmother could do the old mm -mm, double clutching. Oh, yeah. If you've got an old Morris 8. No, I don't want one. I don't need to be cluttered up with it. I want Next project, I think. I need space. I think what, what you would rather have is a garage full of motorbikes. Yeah. Than cars. Yeah, motorbikes. I like looking at motorbikes. I like touching motorbikes. A bit like screwdrivers, really. <laughs> uh, so let's flip reverse it then. Motorbikes in the Pete Coupland collection. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. What's that? You know what my top one is, don't you? Honda S. No, Go no, on. no, no, no. An R1, an old woman R90S. It's a BMW. Only, yeah. In the yellow and. In the goldy colour. The goldy colour. Yeah. The only reason is I wanted one when I was 17, couldn't afford one. When a lot I, of money now. When I could have afforded one, your mum wouldn't let me have one. Yeah. And now they're super duper appreciated classics and they're like, 
I teens in value. Should we start the Pete Cooper no. R90S GoFundMe? Well, if I'd got one, I probably wouldn't enjoy riding it. It's just that I wanted one. I always wanted one. If you've got an R90S, Dad can come and ride your motorbike. No, I don't want to ride it even. It's like meeting your heroes. I might be disappointed, might I? Okay. But yeah, that, I, I, if, I would have one of them to say I've got one, because oh, I've always wanted one from being 17. There's a picture on the front of Bike Magazine and somebody was pulling a wheelie on one. R90S, so many dollars an ounce rocket ship. <laughs> <laughs> that was an American magazine. Anything else in the... Yeah. I wish I'd got an older blackbird. I wish I'd bought an older blackbird. A Honda blackbird. Yeah. What's one of them? It's a CB eleven hundred something or other, other. Oh right. But then they brought out the Ibusa, you see, Suzuki did because it it kills blackbirds. Because Ibusa is a falcon or something, isn't it? That's why Suzuki called there's the Ibusa. Oh, okay. There you go. Interesting. It kills blackbirds. So I think we've faster. What we've learned is you're not bothered about. The last cars. time I went and sat on an art blackbird and your mum says well if you, it was a good one as well your mum says well get it i said do i really want an 180 mile an hour motorbike yes yes you put, do and i have to put a new bloody tire on the back of it every 1700 mile but now i wish i bought an under blackbird they are yeah and also i'd have i really fancied the vsr vfrs i get this right this is a honda a vfr 800 yeah i like hondas that's I haven't got one. going to be an 80s one, isn't it? No, up to about the like, 2000s. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. What's the 80s one you like with the the gold, the yellow and... I don't know what I'm talking about. You don't. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it'd be the BMW, wouldn't it? The R90S. No, no, no. It's like a nice orangey, yellowy, retro-y, 80s looking Honda. Oh, I don't know now. Good. Good chat. <laughs> We'll move on. <laughs> move on from motorbikes. <laughs> uh, I think. I think. I think what we've learnt is cars. No. If I had the space, I'd have lots of motorbikes. There you are. Are you happy uh, being head mechanic, or do you wish John would do more mechanical work on the channel? I wish he'd just learn what the stuff's called for a start. <laughs> that would be a start. <laughs> it's. It, it's. It's a skill. I think I'm probably absorbing through osmosis. I know you believe something's called that, and then that's what you remember. The drum cover. Mm. What the bloody hell is a drum cover? What is it called? It's the brake drum. Brake drum. It's a, good, it's a drum cover, isn't it? No, the wheel covers the drum. It's the same bloody thing. The drum, the drum cover. What's that going over? Is it Callum? In his typhoon? I just, yeah, I, I would really, for a start, if you just learned what the stuff was called, that would be a start. If I told you to take off the brake drum, <laughs> have you ever seen that picture on your emojis and there's somebody with a light mouth up and down like that? That's yeah. how I felt at that question. <laughs> uh, this, is an, uh, this is an obscure question, but I think it's a good question. It's from Mike. Not Mike. Not at Mike. No. Uh, from Mike on the YouTube. What drives you? Who, me? Mm. Nothing. I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm winding down. Nothing drives me anymore. That's... Mechanicking used to drive me, didn't it? I lived for mechanicking at one yeah. stage in my life, didn't I? I think the projects keep us going, don't they? I and was mechanicking from eight in the morning until nine at night, wasn't I? But you enjoy now doing the, the YouTube I like thing. to pop out and have a tinker with them. And I'm going to get you on, on your own YouTube channel. Just get a little camera, uh, strap, no. strap it to you. I'm cutting the lawn today, folks. <laughs> what, what, what's sad lad doing today? Yeah, I'm, I'm cleaning the pond out today, folks. Yeah, that's a regular job this time of the year, getting the pond filled. I'm wallpapering John's ceiling now, folks. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Steve Armstrong says, what is your verdict on wet belts? Before we get your verdict on wet belts... Do you know what wet belts is, What the is, bloody Dad? hell is a wet belt? Yeah, a lot of these cars are having wet belts now. If you put the wrong oil in them, it buggers them up. What's that? What is a wet belt? It's a piss-poor idea. Right, that's, that's we've got your verdict on it, it. Yeah, because folks put the wrong oil in them and it buggers them up. So, if you were to explain it to an idiot... Yeah. What a wet belt is. Well, you know you've got a car with a timing belt on. Yes. Some manufacturers, for whatever reason... They're now running oil. No doubt they've changed them, the materials. I've never come across one in my career. What, so the, the timing belt goes through a, it's a in, pot it, of oil? 
Well, you know your timing chains inside the oil? Yeah. Well, they've got belts running in oil. Right. What happens is somebody puts the wrong sort of oil in it and buggers it up. Like they had done with this and the gearbox. Yeah, the gearbox has got the wrong oil and it didn't work properly. And it slipped. The belt but the slipped. raw oil messes the belts up on these cars. So I'm you're not even sure what vehicles have them. I think Fords. Fords. Or yeah, Fords have them. Let's face it, Fords with their I call it an Ecotech, but they call it something else, don't they? They call it Ecotech. Mm. It's been now. It is generally accepted. It's the worst engine ever built since the bloody. <laughs> I don't know. So the the series. It's the Allegro. So your verdict on wet belts? Well, I've never had nothing to do with them, but I think it's a bloody daft idea that leaves it open to a problem. There you go, Steve. Why? Good. That's what I want to know is why. What would why? be the benefit of it? I don't know. Engineer people have come up with this idea, haven't they? But why, yeah, as you say? To stop it from deteriorating? I don't know. But this belt technology's come on that much that they last for ages. Now. Ford's like 100,000 mile on them, aren't they, they say? I don't, I don't know what the theory behind wet belt is. No doubt if I'd been on a training course, they'd have told me the advantages, wouldn't they? But you've never worked on an engine with wet belt? No. Fine. They are, Steve. Terrible idea, wet Steve belts. probably knows more about wet belts than me. Good. I'm gonna, in fact, that's going to get me in. I shall be YouTubing tonight, looking at wet belts and finding out about them. <laughs> Things that get that excited... Screwdrivers and wet belts. I like to learn about stuff. Uh, Tim I bet I know more about this now than the Penn Bradley book and the workshop manual than I you I bet do. you do, mate. I bet you know I've more been, about me. I've been yeah. sitting reading them. Yeah. Good little car. It runs well. Uh, Tim Gurland says, when will you get a Saab? Yeah, Saabs, eh? When will you get a Saab, John? Well, no, not me. When will you get a Saab? Well, when will we get a Saab? Oh, you tell me some. So... I did a thing on Twitter this week via Haggerty UK who uh, put a thing out to say these are all brands that have gone. Hmm. Triumph, well, maybe not because they still do motorbikes. Rover, uh, Morris, Saab, etc. So dead brands, yeah. Armstrong Siddeley, saying if you could bring one back, what would you bring back? Hmm. And it was an overwhelming response for Saab. Yeah, see, we never had a Saab deal around here. So well, if you don't have Saab dealers, you don't see them. But in lots of places in the country, they had a lot of Saabs. I went to the Festival of the Dead a couple mm. of years ago with this and Mrs. John Coupland and the amount of Saabs that were there. Yeah. Because they were, I don't know, still being sold up until, what, 2009? I don't know. After that. Um, I nearly bought a Saab. Saab 9.3, convertible thing. Uh... This was a long time ago, mm. 10, 12, 15 years ago. We've just never... We've not had Saabs round here. I've never been exposed to Saabs. No, I haven't. Um, would you consider it? I think the last Saab I worked on had got a Ford V4 engine in it, so that's going back a long while. Oh, yeah? And the, Drew and Paul did a Saab two-stroke, didn't they? What I'm, what I'm getting here is we're not ruling a Saab out. But no. it's not something we are... Actively looking for. I'm definitely not looking for a Saab. <laughs> Tim, thanks for your question. Uh, I think he probably likes Saabs, you see. And it's not something we... You, we don't... We never... You're too young to know. But there was never a Saab dealer around here. No. So nobody bought Saabs. I don't think I've ever seen a Saab dealer. Where are they from? Well, Saabs. Yeah. Sweden. Oh, they are. So you didn't even know that. Well, they're good cars in the day. Yeah, yeah. But we never, we never had a Saab dealer around here. Uh, there's a uh, cut in the video, because we filmed the whole video, the entirety of the video. I uh, went to check the camera and uh, the battery died. <laughs> so the rest of it we've already done, but we're doing it again now. Yeah. Um, thanks, Tim, for your question about Saab. It won't be as good the second time around. No, well, you was moaning about fence panels and all sorts of nonsense. I'm sure you won't be moaning about fence panels no. this time around. Um, Saabs, though, I'm not ruling it out. But at the moment, we don't need any more projects. No. No. Good. Thanks, Tim, for your question. Charlie says, have you ever considered migrating uh, and uh, distancing yourself from John's projects? I suppose it emigrating, wouldn't it? Have you ever considered emigrating? No, I did try to convince you to do the same thing, didn't I? Yes. 
to, yeah, I should go to Australia, mate. <laughs> leave, leave all these cars behind. and Sell your cars and emigrate. Mm, emigrate. Uh, but have you ever considered emigrating? No. No. Too local. Too um, um, local. Yes. Uh, migration. Uh, emigration. Uh, our friend lives in Australia and Mrs John Cooper wants to go visit, so that's on the list of things to do next year. Will we ever emigrate? Probably not, but uh, who knows? Good question, though. <laughs> take your Armstrong Sidley. What, to Australia? Yep. There's loads of these left in, our, in, in Australia. Sensible people. They've got... Um, what's the word I want? Utes. Yeah. Armstrong Sidley Utes. Put your sheep in the back of your ute. Oh, what, well, if I go to Australia, I'm not going to be a sheep farmer. Why not? I'll be a scrapyard uh, don't manager. Don't Jump, buying stuff from scrapyards. Oh, right. What do they call that Outback Moving Car Classic Car Program? I don't, I don't watch that sort of thing. Oh, yeah? No, no, no. They go and find something in the middle of the desert that's all sunburned and take it back and... Oh, what, and fix it all up? Mm. Mm. Well, they, they bodge it up. Oh, right. <laughs> Uh, Dean Connors says, and this could cause a problem now, and I'm going to give my opinion as well. Yeah. What cars do you think are overrated and why? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not even going to go there. Do it. Do no, it. no, 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 no. It's got some circles on the front and it's not the Olympics. <laughs> so, Audi? Uh, I'm, I'm not saying the word. Uh, I, I am on a similar vein. As part of the VAG group. I'll tell you another... What's become mainstream now is BMW, isn't it? Yeah. It's mainstream now. Was it never mainstream? No, it wasn't. It was always more executive. What are you doing to my bumper I'm, there? I'm, fi I'm, I'm, I'm fiddling. stroking your bumper box. Please stop stroking my bumper box. It's tactile. <laughs> it is tactile. Yeah, you're right. Um, uh, were, were BMWs never... Leave them alone! <laughs> stop it! Hit you with this tang tool. Um, were, were BMW never No, they mainstream? didn't used to be mainstream. No. They've always been, in my opinion, in my lifetime, classed as one of the big three... Luxury brands, Audi, Mercedes, and BMW. Hmm. Yes. But not for yourself. Do you know what I never saw at the car show? The 2002. I saw lots of 3 Series BMWs, but none mm, of the 2 yeah. Series. Two double or a 6 two. Series. Or 16. Oh, them big things. No, I mean the little ones. 2002s, they were box, box, box. Oh, for, no. For a typical 70s car. So. We've, we've gone off on a tangent there to Sorry. BMW. Audi, overrated. You don't like Audi, do you? No. Why? Because everyone I've worked on belongs to you and it's an horrible thing. Is that, is that why? Is that why you don't like it? Because you've had bad experiences with them? Yeah, I've had bad experiences with them. With them in the past. Mm. I rate them. I think they're blooming good cars. Mm. That Audi A4 B5, the green one, or the silver one, I think are the last of the great Audis, the A4 B5s. They're built well, and it's a good car. You just don't like working on it. Say it. Say which car you don't like working on. You're yeah, with Audi TTs. You do not like Audi TTs. It's glorified Volkswagen Golf. Which leads us nicely into what I think is overrated, which is Volkswagens. I can't... I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. From the old days, Volkswagen's always felt sturdy. Mm. Volkswagen Golf's always felt more sturdy, more substantial than your Metro or your... That's yeah, yeah. They felt more substantial. And people like that. They've got a bit of a following, haven't they? They've you got, either are a Volkswagen yeah, they're, they're person. Really a, no, they've, they've got a proper following. People live and die. Well, your neighbour, our neighbour here is Volkswagen yeah. man. He's got a couple of Volkswagens. Yeah, he yeah. worked with a lad. He was obsessed with Volkswagens. Mm. Yeah. Can't mm. see it myself. Anything else? So Audi and Volkswagen is what we're going for. Overrated. I've never been a Ford fan. Never, ever, ever. No. Ever. What, you mean fast Fords? Like Any sort of Ford. Never been a fan. But there's nothing wrong with them. Apart from his latest one with this blooming Ecotec engine. Yeah, wet belts, wet belts. I don't know whether it is a wet belt engine, is it? I don't know. I think the thing is... I'm going to research these wet belts. I think the thing is, you are influenced potentially 
by what you are surrounded of course yeah i will die on the hill that the k11 nissan micra is the best car in the world Hmm. i will die on that hill but i'm influenced by the fact that i've had multiple and it was my first car yeah someone else might say the fiat cinquento is the best car in the world i should like to see one of them super chaffed what a Fiat Cento, Cento, yeah. super chaffed up. Yeah, big wide wheels, <laughs> lowered right down, whacking great engine. I I'd like to pimp a Micra, properly. Can you hear that? Is that thunder? It is. Thunderstorms come in. Um, we crack on, Gromit. We better crack on. We better talk about it before we do the last question. Uh, you may notice now the King Bolin is missing. Hmm. Uh, because we had to charge the phone back up, we've had an hour and a bit to have a play about you had some dinner mm. I've had a play with the King Bolin mm. it's surprisingly good isn't it oh, up to now, yeah. we've plugged it into the Peugeot 406 I don't want to give too much away uh, it didn't work no. because it doesn't read the Peugeot 406 but we plugged it into the Night Orange Smart mm. very interesting Told some things. it can do some interesting things if you didn't watch the video uh, <laughs> about us bleeding the brakes and the issue with the ABS braking system there mm. it's got some sort of built-in yeah, it fires the valves fire the abs system on there uh which we could have probably done with oh we're all right yeah might not be cutting me lawn this afternoon right um so yeah the king bowl and we have had a little play with there is a full video coming to the channel yeah. now but um can't wait i'm impressed with it so He's far technical department i can just stand and watch and go oh that's clever <laughs> Last question then from uh, Robin is, do you regret your retirement? No. Recommend anybody, as long as you've got plenty of stuff to do, retire. Well, I'll keep you busy. No, um, I mean, I've got stuff to do apart from you. I wouldn't be bored if I hadn't got your rubbish to work on. <laughs> <laughs> you was in the motor trade all your life. Mm. Why did you decide that when you retired was the time to leave? Because it's not about men. I don't. I miss mending the cars, mm. but I don't miss all the politics. And it's all about making money all the time, right? To pay the shareholders. Mm. Mm. Did it get? It got political. The job's all right. It's the bosses. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. It's like like most places, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Uh, did you find yourself getting? Uh, did you find yourself getting more? Into cars that you thought, I can't repair this? No, because you can always go on a training course and they'll teach you how to do it. Okay. So it was purely... It's just the fact that I want you to do blooming 10 hours work today and I'm only going to pay you for eight. And with no dinner break? Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So, like, like most places. Yeah. They expect more and pay you less. Well, as far as I can see, a mechanic is an artisan. He's not a factory worker. And they want you to work like a factory worker. The mechanic is an artisan, like a blooming plasterer or a blinking bricklayer or a painter or electrician or a plumber. They're not machines. Mm. They're not it's a, a skill. Fa- they're not a factory work. They're artisans, mate, artisans. And I think what a lot of people like on the channel is that you actually are a creative engineer mechanic, proper old school mechanic, as opposed yeah. to let's just replace a part. I'm not an engineer, part. I'm an old school mechanic. Yeah, but, let's, but, but rather than let's replace a part, it's repair it, isn't it? This is because miserable gets there won't buy any bits. Well, hey, I've, I'm only, I can only fund what, what we get through the YouTube. So, it is what it is. It buys some blooming £90 floor mats. Oh. But then it goes, oh, how because much for a rack boot? £20 for two rack boots. <laughs> but as we know, floor mats add brake horsepower. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, good. Anything else you want to add to the uh, Q&A podcast second bit that we've filmed now before we end the video Ooh, again for yeah. the second time? No, no. It was better the second time than the first. Do you think so? Oh, yes. You didn't have a rant about your fence panels. Quickly tell us about your fence panels. Yeah, your fence, your fence panels need doing, don't they? Yeah, they do. Uh, people have commented on your fence panels. Yeah, I'm sure they have. That they are letting the team down. Uh, someone has gone and, I don't know, jet washed a load of... What we need is a forklift to lift them out so we can do them properly. What do you mean? I need a forklift. Oh, your mate from the scrapyard can come down with his gas no, he's got he's got a high, haven't he? Lift him out. Grab her. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. In True Pistons, the podcast uh, style, it has now started raining. 
So I think we should end that there. Yeah. Considering we started this and it Folks was will be getting bored glorious. Of us talking oh, yeah, it's nonsense anyway. anyway. Yeah. Um, 10,000 subscribers, I suppose, is the takeaway from this. Excellent. We had a little QA, a little chat with Dad. Loads of stuff coming. What are you most looking forward to? <gasps> the endoscope thing. I know. <laughs> Don't <laughs> insert into orifices. No, no orifices. Is, is. Uh, genuinely, thanks to everyone that has watched. If well, you... I wanted to stick it up my nose to see what's up there. <laughs> Well, we'll soon find out. We need to wind this up quick because it's going to piss it down. <laughs> it <laughs> is. Have a great day, whatever you're getting up to. Thanks for watching. Cheers, folks. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Comment down below. Lots more stuff still to come between now and the end of the year. The windows are open on your smart car. It is absolutely chucking it down now. So we will we'll wrap it up there. Thanks for watching. Nice See you later. See you, Take folks. care. Goodbye. Go Get shut your smart car windows. Getting rained on. Are they, are they open? I bet you've left him out. I bet I have not. <laughs> Thanks for watching this latest episode of Pistons, the podcast. Another one is coming shortly, but if you haven't caught up yet, there's previous episodes on this page now. And don't forget to hit subscribe to always get caught up with the latest podcast.